What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. I have a very special interview slash Q&A today. Uh, I know a lot of you guys are from the US, but a lot of you guys are not from the US and may still be interested in going to medical school or attending residency in the US. So I have two special guests. Introduce yourself. Hi everyone, I'm Helena. And? Hey guys, I'm Will. And they are about to apply for emergency medicine residency coming up very, very soon. But the fun part, we have an international med graduate here along with an American medical graduate. So I wanted to kind of compare and contrast how things go between the two and how that affects the match process. So you guys ready? Yeah. Ready. All right, let me uh, get my face out of the frame and you guys take over. All right, so guys, introduce yourselves and what stage in your medical training you're in. Okay, so I guess I'll go first. Well, my name is Will. I'm a fourth year medical student. Um, I'm about to apply to emergency medicine. Um, I actually go to the same medical college as Andy, so. Hi everyone, I'm Helena. I just graduated medical school a few months ago. I studied in Budapest at Semmelweis University and I'll also be applying this year. So this right here is my competition. <laughs> I guess that's one way to look at it. <laughs> so compare and contrast IMG and AMG, how many years does it take to become an attending physician? Ooh, that's a great question. I guess you go first. Okay. Um, so are we including like pre-med years? Yes. Okay, so including pre-med years, uh, it's four years pre-med unless you do like a BSMD program, but four years of pre-med, uh, four years of med school, and then emergency medicine tends to be like a three-year residency, but I know they have like some four-year residencies, so I guess it's like 12, 13 years or so overall. So in Europe, um, including in Hungary, they're usually six-year medical programs, and most people go right after high school. So it's six years after high school and then they apply to residency. If they're applying to residency like I am and they do US residency, then it's three or four years. But if they stay in Hungary to do like an emergency medicine residency there, I think it's actually five years there. So overall it would be 11 years. Okay, and next question, because I know both of you guys just finished up step two or relatively like recently finished up step two. So one, for just strictly IMG, how do the board exams differ? And if you are going from IMG to American, the American residency programs, how does preparation for the boards differ? Oh, that's a tough question. So uh, in Hungary and a lot of Eastern European countries, you actually have a lot of your final exams and school exams as uh, oral exams. So you sit down with an examiner, right? Like we are right here and they ask you questions and you respond. So the whole switching to multiple choice uh, vignette style questions that step one and step two has was really challenging at first and it took a lot of getting used to. That being said, uh, studying for step one and step two alongside with our school stuff was also really, really challenging. So it was one of the uh, biggest things I had to overcome in med school for sure. Um, I, I'll just say, yeah, same for me as one, probably the hardest exam I've ever taken in my life was step two. Uh, step one was a beast of an exam, but I think you can attest that step two is also quite a beast of an exam, and I'm pretty sure we're both pretty happy to have that behind us. So, so happy. Yeah. So now that you guys are done, you're getting ready to apply, just out of curiosity, what is the match success for AMG versus IMG? Um, okay, I can't really attest to the IMG because I don't really know too much about like your all's match acceptance. Um, uh, I think, I mean, it kind of depends on like specialty. So with EM, um, I'd say like EM's pretty like moderately, you know, competitive to get into um, like step one scores. I know step one's now becoming pass fail, but at least when we're applying, step one still is a factor to our acceptance. Um, so like mid 230s or so for step one for EM, I believe like for step two, it's like 247 or so is like or 244, 247 for step two is kind of like the average for uh, for that. Um, yeah, I think also with emergency medicine in general, like the biggest factor is like you're slow is just getting basically a good evaluation during your emergency medicine rotation. Uh, that's probably the most weighted factor and then probably like after that's like step two research probably doesn't matter as much so 
So based on my research, um, AMGs have a very high success rate usually with the match overall, like across all specialties. I think it's as high as 95%, I don't want to be wrong, but it's quite high for a IMGs across all specialties, including US and non-US IMGs. To my knowledge, last year was uh, around 56%. So a little more than every, one in every two people who apply to residency match. But the caveat is that um, specialty really matters for IMGs and internal medicine is definitely one of the most, um, most possible or like the most common for IMGs to apply to. And emergency medicine is a little bit less friendly. I don't know the match rates for that, but I know that there's a significant preference to US IMGs, so those who are already citizens, it's a little bit easier for EM, whereas for internal medicine, that's not such a big factor. Now, I think I read online, uh, it was like 93% of EM app, like people who become like EM residents are actually American, I think it's like only 7% are IMG, so it is a lot harder as an IMG to go into EM than it is, uh, I guess, as an American medical graduate. So. Okay, kind of piggybacking off that last question, you mentioned that internal medicine is kind of the most popular one for IMGs, and to kind of calm some of the fears of maybe some of our viewers out there that are thinking, can I shoot for a competitive specialty, possibly some surgical subspecialties, or you know, those in the upper tiers that you would associate with being competitive, what would you say to those students to maybe encourage them or guide them in their decision making for specialties? Um, I would say that it's very important who you know and the network that you build. Um, it's not enough to just start in your final year or in your second to last year when you are trying to reach out to programs. I think that you have to show and work on networking throughout your entire med school career. So um, once you have your foot in the door, it's actually very easy to get to meet people and I think it's very helpful because they will vouch for you. But actually bridge, uh, like breaching that first step of like getting your foot in the door, it's very, very difficult as an IMG with no connections. So networking really helps you, especially if you're applying to um, to one of these more competitive ones and I know people who matched as anesthesiology for instance as IMGs as non-US IMGs so it can definitely be done it is much more challenging and the things that they told me was that scores count but they're not as important as we might think and research depending on the specialty is really important but above all networking yeah, that makes sense to say about that uh, so actually the uh, doctor that I shadowed when I was a pre-med was an IMG and he was able to match and he's now a nephrologist and he's a partner at his nephrology um, clinic. His brother actually is an orthopedic surgeon. So for all of you out there, you know, it is possible to do it. Uh, basically what he told me was that his brother made a connection with someone in the orthopedic, I guess, community and he went and shadowed that person, saw him a bunch of times and they're able to write him like a really good like letter of recommendation and he was able to get in with that. So, um, you know, don't lose hope. It's still possible for sure. All right, really good words of encouragement and really well said. So both of you guys are kind of in the thick of things, probably about to submit ERAS or already halfway done with it if you aren't procrastinating. So in your opinion, what has been the hardest part of applying to match? Um, okay, so I'll go ahead and start with that. I think this is probably true for like most people who are like applying right now and like they got the ERAS application open. It's just seeing all the different sections that you have to fill out and just kind of realizing that maybe you procrastinate a little bit more than you wanted to during first and second year. You don't have as much leadership as you hoped or volunteer as you hoped. And now you're kind of trying to like scavenge like what you did during first and second year and try and like, you know, write out as I guess a, the best CV that you can. Uh, that for me is I guess the most stressful part is just, you know, hearing about your peers and stuff who are doing tons of things and have like four leadership opportunities that they've done and like volunteered like a hundred hours and you look at your application you're like just trying to scrape by with like two or three or four um it's definitely i guess pretty stressful uh, i guess for me at least that part is comparison is the root of all evil right yeah definitely. Um, for me the hardest part of everything you know step one step two everything i would say would be the slow 
So the standardized letter of evaluation for emergency medicine is the single most important part of your application and as an IMG that was not at all a guarantee so I had to um, I had to use all of my connections and basically I relied entirely on the kindness of physicians here in America to get me uh, into a rotation that would grant me a slow so that was a very tough obstacle and I would say the pandemic made it no easier so yeah, definitely, definitely did not help um, other than that everything else feels like it's falling into place but I'm with Will on this that I do I do regret some choices I made a few years ago <laughs> yeah you, have, you always will look back and just kind of feel like I wish I did more wish I did that but uh, you just kind of have to make the most of what you got right now but for those of you who are like first or second year medical students um, you know just start looking at possible opportunities to you know get leadership uh, opportunities um, volunteering you just at least start thinking about that now so when you're a fourth year you look back and you're like okay I, I got a good amount of stuff on my CV and I'm, I'm probably pretty good in that aspect all right well speaking of being fourth years and I see in comparison to me starting sec just starting second year you guys have so much more knowledge so much more wisdom than I do for the AMG medical student can you give a little bit of encouragement to the people behind the screen watching and then we can end it with you encouraging the IMG students out there hoping to be in your shoes one day yeah so um, definitely I mean medical school is is a long process and you know I still feel like I have a ton to learn and I guess that's what residency is for but for all the people who are just you know starting out medical school first or second year medical students I mean you're definitely gonna feel like you're overwhelmed with the amount of content that you have to learn and you're gonna feel like I'm never gonna be able to learn this but I guess my word of encouragement is that you're gonna see the same material so many times that it's going to stick like you feel like I'm never going to learn all this material but I promise you you will learn it whether you want to or not, you're going to end up learning it. Um, so just know that you're going to end up being a great doctor regardless because you're going to put in the time, you're going to have to study for step two. It's, it's going to all come together. When you're a first and second year student, it's just going to feel like a jumbled mess. You know, you're learning about pathophys, you're learning about biochemistry, you're learning about all these things like kind of separately. But once you kind of get to fourth year, I'm kind of at the point now where I kind of can see how everything fits together. Um, there's still, of course, holes in my uh, knowledge, but you kind of piece those parts back together. But once you get to, you know, around fourth year, you kind of start to put everything together. And that's a cool feeling. Um, so yeah, just, you know, don't feel too overwhelmed. It will, it will come all together. I completely agree. Yeah, I really do. So um, my advice would be both to AMGs and IMGs, uh, start early, do your research, get familiar with your specialty of choice, start meeting people, make connections. Uh, for IMG specifically, I think it's really important to uh, reach out, attend some conferences, uh, look into research if that's something that interests you, or don't if you don't want to. And uh, there's this saying that I really like, be a sponge. Just go to class and learn. Learn from everyone around you. Um, as an IMG, I think it's very easy, actually even as an AMG, it's very easy to fall into that this isn't high yield yeah. throughout your medical school career. And for us as IMGs, you might be thinking, you don't want to be in class, you don't want to be examining this patient because it's not going to come up on your exam. But the truth is, it might. And even if it doesn't come up in your exam, it might come up with a future patient. So think that you are studying for the knowledge rather than just to pass the exams. Yes, the exams count, but if you study all aspects of it, it'll eventually help you with your exams as well. And then I guess my final words would be, uh, don't forget to live life as well. I'm in this slightly awkward situation where I have to fill out my ERAS with my hobbies right now. <laughs> and I don't have any. I don't have anything that I've done in the past year and a half that I did just for fun. Everything has been ERAS, USMLE, MATCH, ECFMG, just, and of course, passing my school. So try and have some fun, have some hobbies, go mountain climbing, I don't know, do things. <laughs> Yeah, can I just piggyback off that really quick? Um, yeah, what you're saying about everything being high yield, that's actually like super true. Um, like there's things like when I was a first and second year medical student that I was like, this is never going to show up on like any of my exams. And it definitely did show up on my exams. Um, and if it didn't show up on my exams, it showed up um, with a patient in real life. So uh, just make sure you study everything. Um, it, will, it will be important one day to your patients. All right. And... So that concludes 
the short little interview. Thank you both for sharing your experiences. I love bringing people on the channel that obviously have more wisdom than I. I'm still a second year med student, so I know my place uh, and I respect the cumulative knowledge that you guys have. So uh, thank them all in the comments for me and appreciate you guys. Yeah. Good Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you for having us. Best of luck on your residency journey. We'll You'll be great physicians. <laughs>